So I will leave you with Samuel. Hello, hello. Um, great conference so far. Probably the only conference I've ever been to where I've taken notes from every single speaker and I'm not a big note taker. Um, what I'm trying to say is that ends now. I'm a terrible speaker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start with me. Um, as my Twitter says, I'm Sam Levy. Uh, I'm Sam Lev on GitHub and I'm samlev.dev if you want to find the slides for this talk and shout at me later. Uh, freelance developer, consultant, I've been using PHP for getting close to 20 years-ish, somewhere in there. Um, I've been using Laravel since 4.2 and I like to call myself a code monger for no other reason than I think it sounds funny. <laughs> Alrighty. And I look like I've missed a slide there. Wow, that's great. Let's do... Yep, yeah, all right, I missed a slide. Ah, oh, no, it moved it. Here we go. <laughs> wow, that's, that's really great. I actually looked at all this, got it all set up. Okay, so who's been in this situation? Uh, you've got a monolithic code base. You've got decades of technical debt. I mean, talking back to PHP 4, maybe even PHP 3. Uh, everything's built in a homebrew framework because of course it is. Frameworks didn't exist when this thing started. Uh, there's no tests. Uh, PHP unit didn't exist when this started, and when it did exist, nothing was testable. Um, everything's in file name version control. You, you know the type. It's uh, index.php, index.php.old, index.php-2.old, uh, index.php-john-new-real this time. Um, <laughs> It's everywhere, uh, and if you're very, very lucky, you might have got subversion, maybe. Um, probably not running Git. It, it, it's a thing. Uh, no documentation, because the code is um, self-documenting, which means I don't know what it does, <laughs> and neither will you. But this way, I can pretend that you not being able to read my code means you're stupid, not I'm stupid. Um, there's dead code everywhere, absolutely littered with dead code. You've got complete files which you're absolutely certain could not run ever, and if you try to delete them, everything crashes. <laughs> um, you've also got heaps of code commented out, just you, you'll have a 10,000 line file and 6,000 lines of it is a single doc block. Um, because you don't have version control, so everyone's kind of not wanting to let go of that code in case it's important, maybe sometime in the future. Um, and yeah, everything was built by 10 Axe Rockstar Ninja developers. Uh, you can tell they were that because they said webmaster on the bottom of the page, and they are the masters of the web. Um, it was built by people who never had any formal education, got in the business, did everything, probably the CEO's cousin's nephew's best friend's niece. Um, yeah, they, they've kind of got everything, built everything, and everything's a massive spaghetti mess. So, let's uh, spaghetti, some, spaghetti pasta some bad source code. The first step you have to do is secure buy-in, and this isn't just your CTO or CEO, the hardest part to get buy-in is the developers who wrote the code originally. Um, they will feel personally attacked by you saying, let's build this. And there's probably a good reason for them to be personally attacked, like with a large stick or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, your, your biggest part is going to be getting the older developers to buy into this. Um, they don't want you touching their spaghetti. Uh, they feel comfortable in the nice warm bowl of spaghetti uh, and you trying to drag them out of it means they're getting more scrutiny and probably losing a bit of job security because the reality is they don't know what they're doing either. But if you think, uh, if everyone thinks that you're some kind of arcane wizard which only takes 10 days to build a contact form, then um, yeah, you, you feel really secure in a complete mess and no one else is going to touch your mess. So 
there are a lot of ways to secure buy-in. Uh, I like to go higher up the company, get the CEO or CTO, um, get in their ear, say, get them to say it has to happen, and then you implement an RFC process. So everyone can make an RFC on how to make things better or change the process. Everyone on the team gets to talk about this, gets to put comments on it, and then it gets approved or denied based on the comments and talk. Um, the secret with this, and it's really great, this is why I love it, <coughs> people who hate the change don't actually have real opinions. They'll never put real comments on there because that exposes the fact that they don't really want to say anything. And by giving them the option to say something, when it passes, uh, they've missed their chance and they'll generally shut up about it. So once you've got through all that, once you've got approval, you've just got to do all the rest of it. So the first step is reformatting. Yeah, no one who wrote this code is innocent. This is a production system. They gross a couple of million in sales a month. This is in production right now, as is. Um, it's difficult to read even with syntax highlighting. If you can tell me within five seconds what email hash does, I'll uh, give you a high five. I'm not actually giving out real gifts. Um, white space is all over the place. You've got massive gaps where there doesn't need to be any, no gaps where there should be some for readability. Um, indentation, there's tabs, there's spaces, there's some people had two spaces, some, some people had eight spaces, some people were using notepad still, uh, not notepad plus plus, just straight notepad. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, this, this example here luckily doesn't have too, many, uh, too much in the way of hard-coded IDs. The rest of the system does, but you'll see a lot of it. You'll see if something equals four. What's four? Who knows? Uh, and the program flow is absolutely impossible to follow. Um, there's unused variables, so you can see there's a global user is brought in and never used. There's a few other bits and pieces that just, they're, they're there. You don't want to remove them just in case there's some magic that's happening. Um, and there's, yeah, commented out code. Someone's written some debug code in there and it's uh, not in use anymore. I'll get out of your way so you can see the code. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a terrible mess. There's no style in this. So what you need to do is clean it up. Pick a style, any style. Uh, I am not a fan of PSR2, but it's kind of what everyone else uses, so go with it. Uh, if you are moving to a particular framework like Laravel, which uses PSR2 or something similar, um, go with that style, kind of get everyone used to it, and start working from there. Uh, enforcer style. So this is when you introduce the team to CI builds and stuff like that. Uh, using PHPCS or something similar, you can start checking every single commit or every pull request and go, all right, uh, is, is this code good enough? Um, you start building reports of how terrible your code is. Um, I, most systems I've tried this on start at somewhere between 30 and 100,000 PHP CS violations, and then we slowly knock it down till they're zero. Uh, clean up in parts. You don't have to do this all at once. You don't have to go, all right, today's CSS, uh, uh, PHP CS week. Um, everything's getting cleaned up in one go. No, that's ridiculous. Uh, no, no one's going to do that. No one's going to handle that. Um, make a hit list so you get the git frequency of a file, the length of a file, and how many PHP CS errors, throw them in a magic al algorithm which makes sense to you, and come up with, these are the ones which are going to cause the most developer pain, get them out of the way. Uh, I also like to implement a little bit of a uh, rule in the CI process where if a file gets changed by more than 20%, the developer who made that change is now responsible for getting the entire file to PHPCS0. Um, it means if you're working on a large file and changing one line, you're not responsible for it. Um, in that case, if you have more PHPCS errors after you've interacted with it than before, then you've got a problem and that fails. Um, 
so yeah, there, there, there's a lot of ways to make it less terrible. Basically, after every interaction, you want to make the code, if not better, at least not worse. Um, and punish the non-believers. So I said using a CI build, you can start failing builds if any of these things aren't right. So if there are more PHP CS errors before, uh, after than before, or if you've added a new file and there's PHP CS errors, fail the build, don't let that code into production. Every little bit, every little commit makes everything just a little bit cleaner. And at the end you'll get to, say, a thousand PHP CS errors in files that no one ever touches. Just spend a week, go through, clean them all up, and you hit zero. It's uh, a little bit magic. So once you've got all of that and you're all looking real pretty, it's time to refactor because uh, you've made it beautiful, you haven't made it work better. Yep, great. Spilling water. All right. So when you're refactoring, you probably got include soup. <laughs> um, I think it's an early approach to dependency injection. Uh, if you actually look through that, you don't know what anything is. Um, how is includes standard different from includes uh, lib, standard lib? Uh, who knows? Um, what's the difference between common PHP and common funks PHP? What's, uh, how is that different from common code underscore funks PHP? Who knows? Everything's just kind of being put wherever the developer who was working on it at the time felt like it was maybe an okay idea to put it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's everywhere. Um, it gets really difficult to upgrade this. So what you want to do is start deleting code as much as you can, reducing the amount of code you're looking at and using Composer and auto-loading as much as you can. So any commented out code, Delete it straight away, gone, nah, doesn't need it. Uh, if things break, then that's, a, that's another problem. That, that, that's a problem for tomorrow. But um, yeah, delete any code that you're absolutely certain cannot be used. Uh, namespace and group classes. So you'll probably have a bunch of classes using uh, Rector or using PHP Storm. You can start putting them into namespaces make a new folder where all your new classes go, that's all nice and clean, uh, get everything in there. Your 10,000 global functions, you can start moving into namespaced grouped classes, which are just static classes, static functions, but it gets them out of the main global scope and it means you can start pulling in smaller groups of functions with Composer auto-loading. Uh, you can deliver your code through Composer, if you've got the include soup at the top of the page on every single page, one thing I like to do is I build a bootstrap PHP, which calls in the autoloader, calls in the config, sets up the app, and then I route every web request through that. And what it does, boots everything up, boots up the environment, and then includes the original file. So all of the old files, they keep running, they don't know anything's new, but you're able to start using all the new stuff that you've got from Composer and you don't need to add everything to, or add something to every single file in the include soup. Um, it gets done automatically and you can actually start deleting things from the include soup in files as you're cleaning them up. Uh, split monoliths into smaller pieces. I was talking to someone about this last night. Um, I have the record on one of my clients' uh, Git repositories of 1.5 million lines deleted in a single commit. <laughs> what that was, was they had an absolute monster of a monolith system. And it was the customer facing front end, all of the administration panel for business stuff, and a whole bunch of code which was kind of used between them. Uh, that became three Git repositories. One is the front end, which is very nice and small, doesn't actually have much stuff. One is the back end, which is still massive and terrible. And one is all of these classes, which are used by both. So we moved all of the functions into namespaced classes 
and then moves that into a repository that we could deliver with Compose to both projects. So both projects have access to the exact same chunk of code and we could delete all of the really volatile business stuff from the front end that customers interact with and put that on a VPN where it can live in legacy hell forever until uh, some future date and we can <coughs> work on making the customer experience as secure and as easy as possible. Um, you can also use this time to start building a test suite. It doesn't have to be a full test suite. I'm not expecting you to be able to do everything that you can do in Laravel, but you can start doing behavior testing, a whole bunch of other things to kind of document what's meant to happen. And you can use that to try and understand what is happening. You might find a few bugs and there'll be a bit of time going back and forth going, hey, this looks like it's meant to do this. It's not. How do, oh, how do you want to fix that? Um, a good example of that is I came across a contact form on a system. Um, the first commit was the initial SVN commit of initial commit where they dumped the entire project that was, na uh, that was uh, file name versioned before that. They've just dumped that whole thing in in 2008. I found a contact form there with a capture. No action on the form. Then I looked at the capture. It was a static image. <laughs> Since 2008, this contact form was not wired up to anything and no one noticed. <laughs> I don't know how no one noticed, but there you go. And when I brought that to them, I said, do you want me to wire this up or just delete it? And the answer was, uh, no one's used it, no one's complained, delete it. No one's, no one's going to notice. So yeah, um, the other thing to remember is code is going to get so much worse before it gets better. It's, you're playing a game of Towers of Hanoi where you've got a nice stack here, you want it over there, and the only way to get from one place to, to the other is to make everything look as messy as possible in the meantime. And then suddenly you move your final piece and everything's a lot cleaner, but it feels like you've made a huge mistake halfway through. So once you get through this step, it's time to replace the system. Um, typically, when people talk about replacing legacy software, there's either two schools of thought there. There's one of, yeah, let's do it. We'll jump in and I know how this works. It'll all be great. And those are the projects that fail. And there's the ones which go, I don't know how anything works. Let's not do it. Um, what I'm proposing here is a way to get your shiny toys, your new framework, your new everything, uh, without losing all that business logic that already exists. So the situation is tech deck, as far as I can see. This is before I refactored a uh, client system. 9,604 references to the MySQL family of functions. Um, this is after PHP 5.6 was no longer supported. Uh, six months of effort rewriting every single SQL query in that into parameterized queries with PDO. It was hell, but it was doable. Um, this, was the, this was the small client front end system or the customer front end system. Back end system, um, PHP Storm stopped counting at 20,000 and I don't know how many references there are to MySQL family functions. It's behind a VPN. No one can access it outside the company. It's not getting that, this upgrade. Um, so yeah, old code isn't to written, written to modern standards. Libraries and tools that they're written on don't exist anymore. Uh, aside from MySQL, there's Encrypt, get, got used everywhere. Thanks W3 Schools. Everything was written terribly because of you, you bastards. Um, <laughs> there's no easy search and replace fix. So Encrypt's a great example for this. Um, uh, for this same client, they had, I think, seven years of files encrypted with MD, uh, with M -encrypt, uh, Encrypt, sorry, AES-256. Uh, we moved to PHP 7.2. Um, Encrypt is no longer in PHP 7. We decided to use OpenSSL and we encountered an issue. Encrypt 
does not do AES-256. Encrypt does its own version of AES-256 where everything is null padded. OpenSSL thought it was decrypting files with the AES standard. It was not. Um, I had to run a six month operation of pulling out every single file, decrypting it in Encrypt, re-encrypting it with OpenSSL and restoring the file. Um, yeah, it was hell. Um, and also PHP memory can only be up so far. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's a bit of a mess. Oh, and I pressed the wrong button. All right, so Frankenstein it till you make it. Uh, Michael already mentioned this. Uh, strangler fig project. Calling it a strangler fig is better than calling it a strangler project, um, but that's where the name comes from. So strangler figs, if you don't know, they're a type of tree grows up in the far north in the tropics where I was born. Um, birds come along, eat the fruit, and do their business in the branches of other trees. That, that creates a little plant which grows in the nook of a tree. Its roots come down, it sinks into the ground, it uses all the resources, all the stuff that the main tree would be using. The original tree rots and dies and disappears and you're left with a tree that looks a lot like the original tree but it's actually a completely different plant and that's the strangler fig. So what you do in application form is you build a new application, boot it up in Laravel, or, or, or if you're using something else, use something else, but look, well, it's Laravel, so yeah, boot it up in Laravel, um, and you find a small piece. I always start with users. User management, just the standard CRUD, not talking roles, but user management. It is the least volatile in terms of unexpected functionality. Every user, uh, every system has users which get created, updated, deleted. They almost all have a username and a password, usually have an email address. Um, Laravel comes with a user object already. It's really easy to kind of get all of that moved. So you break your original application into small pieces and move a little bit into the new one. Um, you support your old application. You don't keep adding new features to it. If you add, need to add a new feature, if a massive feature request comes in, build it in the Laravel application. You don't want to, the old system to keep growing, but you don't also want it to die out entirely because it's still in use, it's still making money. Um, unless you can convince all of your users to just stop using your system for two years and you somehow still stay alive. Um, Unless you can do that, that's great, but if you, if you still have users that still have changes, they still have to use things, you support them in the old system, build everything new, and slowly move little bits and pieces across uh, into the new system. Um, delete stuff from the old system as it gets moved across. You do not want code living in two locations. You do not want confusion about which system is in charge of this piece of code. Um, your old system will start getting smaller and smaller and you'll feel really nice and good about it um, until one day it's a single file somewhere and you're sitting there going, why do we even need this anymore? Um, and, that, and that's when you've done. You've completely strangled that application. And here's the really important piece that everyone seems to forget. Build your new application in a way that it's really easy to strangle in the future because... What you have to remember is today's brand new system is tomorrow's legacy. So it doesn't matter how great your Laravel 6 application is, in 10 years you might have moved to Symfony or we might just accept that everything will be WordPress by then and everything's a post type. <laughs> so in, in that situation you have to build it in such a way that it's really easy to chunk out uh, domains or modules and pull bits out and start strangling them in the future. Um, so yeah, it won't happen overnight. Don't expect this to be a fast thing. Um, I'm just going to let you read this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if um, you wait for long enough, maybe someone's stupid comment will do the work for you. I am willing to wait this one out. Either he honours it and I get a free system rebuild 
or he doesn't honour it and I bump the number up. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there are a few helpful tools to do this, uh, to help you do this. PHPCS I mentioned, great as a first step just to get your code style clean. PHPCS Fixer can do a lot of that automatically for you. Um, once you're getting into the refactoring part, PHP Stan and Psalm are really great for, under, for making sure that your new code does what it's meant to. Um, static analysis is absolutely excellent for that, uh, especially if you're using types, which, um, sorry, Michael. Um, Rector is a great way, if, if you're not using PHP Storm, Rector has a whole bunch of utilities to help refactor stuff. Uh, PHP unit, please start writing tests. Um, other than that, other useful things are half a brain. Um, a lot of people approach it be, uh, don't want to approach this because it seems hard. It's not actually super difficult, it's just tedious. And using a little bit of brain power will help make the process a little bit easier. Um, some encouragement for the other <laughs> team members. Uh, very, very useful. Um, so whether this is failing CI builds or getting your CTO or CEO to step in and go, hey, look, this, we're building to a better quality now. Um, this old stuff will not stand. Um, copious amounts of alcohol, uh, absolutely great for keeping your sanity or um, not great for your liver, but great for your sanity. And if all else fails, maybe just bribes or find a new company or, just, you know, no, whatever brings you the most um, happiness. Um, so, yeah, if you have any questions, comments or abuse, the slides will be up on Sam Lev Dev. They're actually probably up there already. Um, there's also a, a form on there under this talk for feedback. Uh, it's really important for speakers to get feedback from people, not just in the hall, but please, any, any feedback, uh, anything good, anything you don't like, um, and not just for me, for all the speakers, uh, hit them up on Twitter or send them emails or something. Um, it really helps to know how well talk went down, anything we can improve, anything you did like, anything you didn't like. If you have any feedback which is an um, code of conduct approved, you can submit it anonymously. Uh, so yeah, um, up there, feedback. Also, you can buy my awesome T-shirt from there and any of the other stupid T-shirts you've seen me wearing this weekend. Um, so yeah, uh, I think I've got us a two minutes close to being back on time. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much.